Hey guys, welcome back to another Poker Warden show. I am Dave, I'm the Poker Warden, and I'm here to bring you all your recaps, your updates, and your previews of the action happening at this year's World Series of Poker. First, let's get into the action with the recaps. We awarded two bracelets yesterday at the World Series of Poker. The first bracelet was in event number 12, the $1,500 No Limit Hold'em. In yesterday's video, we talked about Miss Gillette, who held a very, very commanding ship lead with more than the next three competitors combined. Well, let's see who was the winner of event number 12 right here. David, the Dragon Fam, is your winner of event number 12 for a little under $392,000. David outlasted his opponent after a three hour long heads up battle and he takes home his third World Series of Poker bracelet. Congratulations to the well-known poker pro David Pham who takes down his third bracelet. Miss Gillette took the commanding chip lead. It got her a final table appearance. She ended up finishing in fourth for a very nice six figure payday. Congratulations to her. She is from Australia so she's from a long way from home. That was supposed to be an Australian accent, but I guess it wasn't because I don't know how to do an Australian accent, but hey, what are you going to do? So congratulations to Mr. Fam for his third bracelet. Some other notables who cashed in event 12 was Phil Collins in 19th place, Mike Sexton in 26th place, as well as Lonnie Harward in 74th. Next up is event number 13, which is the $1,500 no limit single draw deuce to seven tournament. We talked about yesterday, we were down to the final six players. Bernard Lee was in search of his first bracelet. So let's see if he had a chance to get it. Here is your winner from event number 13. Well, the three Pete's continue as Frank Casella outlasted Bernard Lee to win the No Limit Deuce to Seven single draw tournament. Frank Casella outlasted Bernard Lee in a three hour heads up match. Congratulations to Frank on his third World Series of Poker bracelet, and he takes home a little over $89,000 for the win. So it looks like Bernard Lee has to settle for second place. Uh, it was a well hard fought battle. Again, they lasted over three hours in heads up play. This actually marks the third time that in a Deuce to Seven tournament, Bernard Lee has finished in the top 10. So congratulations to him with his runner up. Jared Blesnick, who we talked about yesterday, actually came in as a short stack, but he finished in fifth place. But his prediction of making the final table after level three, he probably cashed in on those side bets that he made. So congratulations to him and all the other final table participants in event number 13. So that's it for our recaps. We had two bracelets awarded yesterday. Congratulations to David Pham and also to Frank Casella, who each won their third poker bracelet. So let's go move on to our updates. Event number 14, which is the $1,500 horse tournament, started the day with a little over 160 players and by the end of day two had whittled them down to 18. Here are your chip leaders from the end of day two of the horse tournament. Here are the final 18 remaining in event number 14, the horse tournament. Some multi bracelet winners are still in the field, including last year's winner of this same event, Ian Johns. Some other notables are David Baker, David Singer, Max Pescatori, and one-time Player of the Year runner-up, Brandon Shaq Harris. All remaining 18 will come back today at noon and play down to a winner. Each player is guaranteed a little over $5,800 right now for their cash. Some notables who finished in the money but did not bag were Daniel Negrano and Jason Mercier, who each earned a min cash. Mike Gordinsky, who was a previous winner of the $50,000 Players' Championship, finished in 50th, and Marco Johnson finished in 32nd. So congratulations to everyone who's still in the tournament and good luck today as you go for your bracelet. Next up is event number 15, the $10,000 No Limit Hold'em Heads Up Championship. Here's who made it to the final four. Here are your final four competitors in the $10,000 Heads Up Championship. One is a World Series of Poker champion. Another finished runner-up in this event last year. And the other two are well-known high stakes pros. Each remaining player is guaranteed a little over $112,000, but they're fighting for the heads up title and a little over $336,000. The matches will start today at 3 p.m. with Ryan Reese and John Smith, 
And then the second match will take place right after that, and then they'll play the heads-up battle for the championship when two winners are crowned. Some other notables who cashed but failed to make it through the day were Dan Smith, Olivier Bursquet, and Ryan Fee, who was well-known for his partnership with Doug Polk and for starting upswing poker. Each of the remaining four has already won five matches, but they need to win two more matches to win the $336,000 and the coveted bracelet. Next up is event number 16. I wish I had a drum roll or I wish I had some like, you know, fireworks, but I'm not too good with the, you know, the editing stuff yet. Uh, but this event was the first event of the 2017 World Series of Poker that outpaced last year's numbers. In fact, it didn't just outpace it by a little bit. It outpaced it by almost 300. So the $1,500 six-handed, who said six-handed play wasn't dead and wasn't fun? Last year, the event attracted 1,477, and this year, it attracted 1,748. So like I said, it outpaced it by almost 300. And at the end of day one, 263 players remain. Here are your top chip counts after the day one action. The 263 players remaining are led by Dustin Bush with 182,000. Not too far off his heels, our well-known poker pro Matt Berkey, as well as Shannon Shore is among the leaders heading into day two. And here are your payouts for event number 16. 263 players who remain will finish in the money. A min cash is worth $2,247, while everybody's going to be looking for that first place of $393,000 plus the World Series of Poker Gold Bracelet. This event is being played six-handed, so a final table appearance is worth a little over $63,000. So all players will return today at noon, and they will play another 10 one-hour levels, which should get them close to the final table, final two tables. Some interesting names that are still in that aren't near the top that are, are either at or above average are Justin Bonomo, Terrence Chan, Paul Volpe, Kate Hall, and the well-known Alan Kessler. Good luck to everybody on day two in event number 16, the six-handed $1,500 No Limit Hold'em Tournament. Event 17 is the $10,000 Dealer's Choice Tournament. Entrance this year was 102 players, which is down a little bit from last year. Here are your top chip counts after the end of play for day number one. After day one, here are your leaders heading into day two. Ray Decredani leads the final 37 players in a play. He holds a little over 260,000 in chips. And as expected, the leaders are filled with who's who in the poker world, including Todd Brunson, Daniel Negreanu, James Obes, John Turner, Mike DeMouth Matisau, Sean Buchanan, and among others. So good luck to all players as they return today and play day two. 37 players remain today. Here's what they're fighting for. Event 17 attracted 102 entries, so 18 of those will return in the money. A min cash is worth a little under 15000 while well, first place will earn a little under 274000 This event is also played six-handed, so a final table appearance is worth around $44,000. The 37 players who remain in the $10,000 Dealer's Choice Tournament will return today at 2 p.m. and play another 10 one-hour levels until they're probably down to the final table. So good luck to everybody remaining, especially Daniel Negrano, who's looking to shave the beard. This is, he's got another shot. Who will see what happens. So that's going to do it for today's updates. Another new thing that I want to throw in here every once in a while is kind of update you guys on the World Series of Poker Player of the Year. Now every year this is what players want to be known as. The players get a huge banner of their face when they win the Players of the Year among other things. But here are your leaders in the 2017 Player of the Year race as we head into day 10 for the World Series of Poker. Here are your top 15 players heading into Day 10 action for the World Series of Poker Player of the Year. Thomas Pompanino, who outlasted that huge field, leads currently. However, unless he shows some additional results, he's probably only going to end with 347 points as quantity and quality outlast one huge tournament win. Doug Polk sits in six with 231 points. Benjamin Jamani is up there, James Opes, Bertrand Elke Gastrubier, I don't know how to say his last name, but I'll just call him Elke. He's up there. 
Daniel DeGrand is down here in 28th with a little over 160 points. He is deep in another tournament, so we will see how far he can move up if he can get a bracelet win. But we will got, we'll keep you guys posted on the player of the year race. As well as that big banner, they will the winner will receive a $10,000 entry into the World Series of Poker Europe, as well as a $10,000 entry into next year's World Series of Poker main event. So good luck to everybody in the player of the year race. It's still early. There's still a good five weeks left of action. So that's it for our updates. Let's check the calendar and see what's coming into action today at the World Series of Poker. So today is Friday, June 9th. Focus, focus, focus. There we go. <laughs> today we have the $565 PLO, and then we also have the new $365 buy-in, the Giant. So event 18 is your $565 buy-in PLO tournament. This actually boasts an unlimited re-entry option with the two starting flights. Flight 1 is at 11 and Flight 2 is actually at 4 p.m., which is a little bit later than the 3 p.m. normal start for the second um, tournament of the day. Last year, this event attracted nearly 2,500 entries and actually set a record for being the largest live non-hold'em event. Last year, this event was won by Ryan LaPlante for a little over $190,000. The day is scheduled for 18 30-minute levels. And on days two and three, those levels will move back to 60 minutes. So we'll see if this event can outpace last year's. Well, we all know PLO is fun, so why not get in there? Interesting thing to note as well is a couple people actually last year re-entered this event over seven times. So we'll see who is the notorious re-enterer in this year's tournament. And is it going to be seven? Is it going to be eight? Who knows? Good luck to everybody who is playing the PLO tournament today. So follow along on Twitter, PokerNews.com, and World Series of Poker to keep up to date on what's going on with event number 18. Event number 19 is a new tournament for the 2017 World Series of Poker. It's kind of, if you're familiar with Poker Stars, uh, it's more like their phase tournaments. Every Friday at 7 p.m., it's a $365 buy-in tournament. You get 20000 in chips, so chip value, good. Structure, maybe okay, but the blind levels are fast. This tournament, you start with 20000 in chips, and on day one, blind levels are 20 minutes long. Play is scheduled for 18 levels, or until 10 remain, whichever comes first. And the top 15% of each field will cash, so you will cash in the tournament if you play today. The individuals who bag and go on to day two will come back on July 8th to play day two and day three. On days two and three, blind levels move up to 40 minutes, and all remaining cash that wasn't handed out from day ones gets combined into day two, kind of like they do with the Colossus, and they'll hand them out in a payout structure that fits the number of players that remain. So this event will happen every Friday until July 7th, and then July 8th, and ninth will be days two and three. It's kind of a new interesting structure. It kind of reminds me of the phase tournaments that are on PokerStars. Um, if you're there, you, it, it's a cheap way to have a chance to win a bracelet. $365 buy-in can fit pretty much anybody if you're playing the daily deep stacks that are happening to about $100 more. And you have a shot to win a World Series of Poker bracelet. The only thing that might be bad is if you weren't going to be in town until July 8th, you might have to come back. But hey... It's probably a good reason to come back to Vegas, right? Chance at a bracelet. But if I was in Vegas, I would definitely be, be partaking in this tournament as it seems like it would be fun um, as well as an enjoyable experience. So we'll see how the first flight or the first tournament, first phase of the Giants works out today. Again, this tournament starts at 7 p.m. Vegas time. So stay tuned for that. So guys, thank you guys for watching another update video from the Poker Warden. I like doing these. These seem to be fun. And I hope you guys are getting some good information and following along with all the action. Please give my video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to my channel so you get notified of all my future videos. And if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave that information down below. Also, if you want to see anything added, if you think I, I can change something or if you think that 
you want me to cover something else that I'm not covering right now, let me know. I'll make sure to try it out for you. But until next time, guys, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And until then, peace out, everybody.